right, so with the Hughes Center model, um, hopefully we don't just throw information at you and then you go about your daily lives. Uh, we, we really actually hope to do something with the information that you've heard today and to um, establish some ways forward. So the first thing I'd like to do, and, and I'll admit right up front, this is my subjective opinion about what some of the points of agreement may be. Uh, I recognize not every single person might agree with these uh, points of agreement. But I just want to cover some areas where uh, we, we might all be able to come together and, and have a consensus. There's uh, uh, about $3 billion of economic impact from the poultry industry in this region. The poultry industry is a really interestingly integrated uh, industry where it has three legs of a stool bill. Uh, companies like Tyson and Allen Harim and uh, Purdue and others, family growers and grain producers all come together in a regional area to support this $3 billion industry. I think it's important that we all understand there are no hormones added to chickens. Uh, family farms dominate the agricultural industry, especially in Delmarva. Litter is a locally produced, slow release organic plant food. Health insurance seems to be a major challenge to full-time farming here in Maryland and likely elsewhere as well. There's lots of record keeping that farmers are required to do. Some by the government and some by the industry. That's right, government and industry. Excess litter does not seem to be a problem today for growers. They all seem to be able to have a source to remove their excess litter. A mass balance for Delmarva is coming and should drive private sector investment. Industry has been most impacted by improvements in technology, um, and Maryland farmers lead the way in our nation for balancing food production and natural resources protection. Is anybody, does anyone want to jump up and disagree strongly? Okay, a few more. Inclusive collaboration works best as demonstrated by improvements by the industry to the Bay Model and the Mass Balance programs. Uh, farmers have got to be at the table when statewide regulatory decisions are made. There is no such thing as big environment. <laughs> the government, we're here to help. And specifically, they're here to help with technical support, cost share, outreach, education, permitting, and of course, enforcement. So those are some of the big important uh, messages that I heard today. Verna, do you, would you add to any of those? Sure. I think it was interesting to me to hear Suzanne start this day off with a comment that how she has seen this area change coming back in. And I think a lot of us who have lived here for a long time maybe fail to see that. The other things we heard is people like, are pe from people like Beth and Kelly talking about these really complicated, mind-numbing processes that they can now flip through in a couple of slides. We really are way ahead of the rest of the country in terms of these, um, this information that we have. You know, Rich Patuk's here from EPA and has suffered through a lot of that with, with everyone. The other piece that I wanted to say is I do a lot of consulting now in different parts of the country and have been up in the Great Lakes. And what I have seen is the lack of um, dialogue between the environmental community and the agricultural community on a regular basis. And this isn't a paid political announcement for the Hughes Center. I, you know, I'm on the board, but I don't get anything for it. But anyhow, um, I think that the ability to learn and build trust between the players um, in that kind of a situation has really allowed us to move forward. And those of you who've taken your day and practically your whole day here um, are an evidence that we do have an opportunity to move ahead. When I hear that Bob Gallagher and Andrew McLean are co-chairing with Bobby something, I think, you know, that's really good because there was times when I can remember and I see Ann Swanson in the audience, I'm, I'm sure she can remember when those things weren't happening. And so I just feel that we need to take advantage of that and move forward. So that's kind of on the fuzzy side. 
Yeah, I, I think that perfectly sets, sets up for where do we go from here and what are the take home messages that we all need to develop action plans around as we move forward on, on the issue of poultry in Maryland and in D the Delmarva. And, and first of all, uh, collaborations, as Verna just pointed out. Collaborations that involve industry, government, and private investment. And, and I would suggest that we have got to get creative on the investment side of the issue. What I haven't heard a lot here lately is how the uh, investment in terms of the field of economic investment can play a role in changing how industry and certainly how government interacts with some of these issues. We talked a little bit about the millennials. Some of them have money to invest and they're willing to support industries that are trying to shift and change. So I think private investment and collaborations is a really big part of who we are in the future. We're off to a great start in Maryland. Um, let's continue to, to set the standard. Uh, I mentioned that technology seems to have been the biggest change that a lot of our growers have experienced. And a lot of them mentioned the um, drip water sources as well as the, um, the computer monitoring. So technology has been the biggest change over the last 20, 30 years, and it looks like technology is going to continue to change this industry moving forward. We talked about biomass heating solutions, and I think it's really important that the public especially understand we're not just talking about energy conversion here. We're talking about improving the health and the rate of growth of chickens. These are business factors that can improve and increase the efficiency of growing chickens. Um, and increasing phosphorus ash that m then may be a saleable item. Other uh, technologies that were discussed is uh, ammonia emissions in the house has to do with that heating solution, composting, the anaerobic digesters, be they mesophilic or thermophilic, um, and then some other general areas that uh, Kristen helped us think way in the future or, or maybe sooner than we think, that consumer demand. It's already influenced what, how we're growing our chickens. How can we anticipate consumer demand changing? Um, climate change. Um, we are, are, we've got to be ready with our feed and our N2O emissions, phosphorus sustainability, efficiency in nitrogen fertilizer uptake. We thank you for your participation. I want to thank the Rural Maryland Council for sponsoring it and all of the steering committee members, thank you so much for attending Poultry 101, and we'll be in touch about the summary and the results from this meeting. Thank you so much.